Hello everyone. Welcome to Storytime with the Princess. Today we're going to be continuing the story of Pinocchio. I am the Blue Fairy and I'm reading this story from Jiminy Cricket's perspective, okay? It was a long swim, but we finally made it to dry land. Come on, let's go home, I said. Pinocchio ran to the door of Geppetto's house shouting, Father, Father, I'm home! But no one answered. So we looked through the window. The house was empty and Geppetto's workbench was covered with cobwebs. He is gone, Pinocchio said. We were sitting on the steps trying to decide what to do when a piece of paper fluttered down from the sky. It's a message about your father, I said. Where is he? Pinocchio asked. It says here. He went looking for you and was swallowed by a whale named Monstro, I read. Pinocchio looked heartbroken. But wait. He's alive inside the whale at the bottom of the sea. I'm going to find him, Pinocchio said as he headed off. Are you crazy, I asked. He's in a whale. But Pinocchio kept going until he reached the coast. I watched him tie his donkey tail around a big rock to keep himself floating. This whale, Monstro, he swallows whole ships alive, I warned. Goodbye, Jiminy, Pinocchio said as he prepared to jump in. Well, I couldn't let him go alone, could I? Gee, what a big place, Pinocchio said when he reached the bottom. Pinocchio asked a number of fish, but they knew the whereabouts of Monstro the whale. But when they heard Monstro's name, they swam away. We had no way of knowing what Monstro was sleeping at the bottom of the ocean floor nearby. Inside his huge belly, Geppetto and Figaro were sitting on the deck. Not a bite for days. We can't hold out much longer, Geppetto said. He knew that if the whale did not wake up and swallow some fish soon, they would starve. I never thought it would be this way, he said sadly. At that moment, the school of fish swarmed so close to Monstro that they nearly collided with him. The commotion woke the whale and it gave chase. Seconds later, he opened his huge jaw and swallowed hundreds of fish. Pinocchio was in the same mouthful of water. I was left behind. Here they come, Tuna, Geppetto shouted. We will eat. He started scooping tuna into the boat. Enough for weeks, he said gleefully. Geppetto was hauling in fish so fast that at first he didn't notice Pinocchio holding tight to a tuna. When he finally saw him, he was dumbfounded. Pinocchio! Father Pinocchio yelled, leaping into Geppetto's arms. They were all together again, Pinocchio, Geppetto, Figaro, and Cleo. But Pinocchio was anxious to find a way out of the whale. I came to save you, he announced. Oh, no, son, I tried every way. I've even built a raft, said Geppetto. That's it, Pinocchio said. We'll take the raft, and when the whale opens his mouth, it's hopeless, Geppetto said. He only opens his mouth when he's eating. Then everything comes in, nothing goes out. Let's make a nice fire, cook some fish. A fire, that's it. He built a fire using barrels, chairs, and anything that would burn. Well, make him sneeze, he explained. I was still floating around when I saw the male whale's mouth. Then, suddenly, the whale sneezed, and the raft came whizzing past my head. Wait for me, I shouted. Pinocchio and Geppetto paddled desperately to get as far as possible from the whale. But the fire and smoke had made the whale furious. He charged right at them. He's trying to catch us. Paddle, son! Geppetto shouted. Then the whale's great tail crashed down on the raft, smashing it to bits. Pinocchio bobbed to the surface. Father, he called, looking around. Nearby, Geppetto was hanging onto a piece of debris from the raft. He was sinking fast. Pinocchio, swim for shore, he shouted weakly. Save yourself. But Pinocchio swam towards Geppetto. He grabbed his collar just before Geppetto sank beneath the waves, and he towed him towards the shore. I rode the waves on an empty bottle to get to the shore. Geppetto was already there on the beach, barely gaining consciousness. Big Row and Cleo had been washed away to safety. Where was Pinocchio? I climbed on a rock and called his name. Geppetto and I saw him at the same time, lying motionless between the rocks, face down on the surface. Geppetto carried Pinocchio's quiet body back home and laid him on the bed. All night Geppetto knelt by the side of the bed, crying, My boy, my brave little boy. As Pinocchio slept, he heard the voice of the Blue Fairy. Prove yourself, brave, 
truthful and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy. Then the room where Pinocchio lay filled with light. Awake, Pinocchio, awake. Pinocchio opened his eyes and sat up. Father, what you crying for? Because you're dead, Pinocchio, Geppetto replied. No, I'm not, Pinocchio said. Yes, you are. Now lie down, his father replied. But father, I'm alive and see, I'm real, Pinocchio said. I'm a real boy. You are a real boy, Geppetto said joyfully. Figaro grabbed Cleo and kissed her. Geppetto started all the clocks in the house until they began chiming. Then he wound up his music box, grabbed his accordion, and played until the house was filled with the sound of bells and music. It was a good time for me to slip away. Outside the door, I looked up the wishing star. Thank you, I said. He deserved to be a real boy. The star twinkled. The next thing I knew, I was wearing a star-shaped badge. Official conscience, it said. I guess we all had our dreams come true.